Ancient Evil has the single best easter egg in Call of Duty Zombies history. Now before you click off this video because you hate Black Ops 4, give me some time to convince you why. Let's begin with the map itself. Ancient Evil is set directly after the events of 9 and is set in the underground city of Delphi, Greece. The map takes heavy inspiration from Greek mythology, introducing numerous concepts and creatures to fight with or against, including Pegasus, Giganese, and the fabled oracle of Delphi known as Pythia. The map is highly stylized and quite frankly just beautiful to look at. It looks and feels like a love letter to Greek mythology. If you didn't know, the Ancient Evil layout is actually modeled after the real Delphi. As soon as you load in, the map wastes no time getting you right into the action. You spawn in the middle of this giant coliseum and the entire first wave of zombies is standing right in front of you. Every step of the entire easter egg on this map feels somewhat cinematic and integral to the story and lore of the map itself. Like the other chaos maps, the easter egg begins with finding an activating the sentinel artifact. Upon activation, you're immediately put into a lockdown that quickly begins to feel overwhelming once you realize how massive the horde of zombies is that's coming straight towards you. At the last second though, your main ally is introduced and Pegasus swoops in to save the day. The map then pushes you into acquiring the golden bridle, which is used to ride your new friend Pegasus to the underworld. As soon as you pick it up, however, you're introduced to the Giganese, which rises from the ground and attacks the player. The first actual step of the easter egg is to do the challenges to ignite the blue flame. The challenge system on Ancient Evil is one that we'd never seen before up until this point and was so popular that it's featured on every single map in Cold War Zombies. You basically walk up to it, it gives you a challenge for a limited amount of time and then you move on to the next one. This is just a much better system than that of previous games because it gives the player the option to not do a specific challenge and they don't get punished for it. If you get a challenge that you don't want to do, you just wait out the two minutes and then you go back to the Oracle for a new one. Once enough challenge challenges have been completed. On solo, this is like the equivalent of one epic and one legendary, which isn't too bad. You melee the fire with your shield to ignite the oil spilled around the map, beginning the easter egg quest. I know this video is about the easter egg, but can we just take a moment to just acknowledge how great the shield is on this map? Like, I genuinely think the ancient evil shield is probably the coolest iteration of the shield that we've ever had. The next few steps of the easter egg are basically all focused around each of the four gauntlets. The gauntlets are the wonder weapons of the map, and you have to upgrade them all except for guys wants to do the easter egg. There actually is a second upgrade that you can do on each gauntlet, but it's not required to do the main easter egg quest. Each gauntlet is tied to a greek god or goddess. The first one that you need for the easter egg is the hand of Charon. This gauntlet is upgraded by getting kills in the river of sorrow and then finding three coins. The lore behind this is basically Charon was the ferryman that transported souls to the world of the dead, and if you placed a coin in the body of a loved one at the time of burial, you would essentially bribe Charon to pass over the body. Once you've redeemed the hand of Charon, you basically shoot the four statues, and then comes one of my favorite steps of the easter egg. There's basically three spinning cogs around the map that you have to shoot with your shield at just the right time to lock it in place. This step requires precision aim and pretty good timing on throwing projectiles. The next upgrade you need is the hand of Gaia. In Greek mythology, Gaia is the personification of earth spirit, so naturally the upgrade for this hand involves transporting plants. Again, you don't have to upgrade this gauntlet for some reason, but you do need the base version for a small step. The Gaia step is a fun little puzzle that requires precision timing and interacting with this sundial on the ground to line up the blue symbols at just the right moment. Next we need the upgraded hand of Hemera who is the goddess of the daytime. Upgrading this gauntlet is really cool and memorable. You basically shoot three mirrors around the map to get them into the right position for a double bank shot. Once you have the upgraded Hemera gauntlet however comes probably the most tedious part of the entire easter egg. You essentially have to get a Giganese to shield blast a very specific part of the map. I do wish that this step was a little more forgiving on how precise the shield blast needs to be. Once you actually get him to do that, you place the hand in the raw statue for a lockdown-esque step. While doing the ancient evil easter egg solo, I literally never look forward to this step. Not because it's necessarily tedious, but just because it's flat out difficult. You have to make sure that the beam coming out of the statue doesn't lose line of sight with the wall, and the little shield skeletons come in seemingly every second just to ruin your day. On top of this already being a difficult step, there's a guaranteed blight father to spawn in during this part. Oh, and did I mention that in solo you don't have a gauntlet? So unless you get a really lucky drop or have a upgraded Helian Salvo, this step is nearly impossible. The step is a lot to handle and it's always a huge relief as soon as it's over. Next comes a fun little mini game back in the amphitheater that is just like a flat out cool step that really shows off the power of the gauntlet. I haven't really talked about the story yet of this map and I've just been really focusing on the map's ties to Greek mythology. Once you enter the symbols on the door in the underworld, one of the craziest cutscenes in the 
the chaos storyline takes place that honestly was pretty shocking the first time you ever see it then once that's over we basically pick up our last gauntlet which is the hand of Uranos, who is the god of the sky the upgrade for this is basically you bounce zombies off giant feathers in the sky and then bounce the remains back into the altar i mean come on this step is just really really cool and then it's basically boss fight time the boss fight on ancient evil is probably the only thing that doesn't amaze me about the easter egg it's a two-part boss fight very similar to that of garad Krovi. i mean it's a fine conclusion to a fantastic easter egg but the fight itself just didn't amaze me i would say it's good but not great overall ancient evil is just a really really good map with one of if not the best easter egg that we've ever had unlike other black ops 4 maps there's little to no super annoying steps the ancient evil easter egg is just on another level the quest combines puzzle solving and difficult gameplay in a way that utilizes the entire map the whole time you're completing the main quest you feel tied to the lore of the map if you want to see where i rank ancient evil on my top 10 call of duty zombies maps of all time check out this video